Welcome to This Week in AI, your weekly roundup of everything that's been happening in AI and most importantly, what it means for you. Today we'll be discussing what Elon Musk's new AI company means for businesses, a warning about the future of humanity, Google's new AI search engine, Nvidia's incredible new text to video demos and what they mean, and a stunning demo from none other than OpenAI's president, which makes ChatGPT even more disruptive to the workforce by removing one of its key limitations. It's been a busy week. Let's get to it. And by the way, there's a central theme to this week's update, so we're going to jump around a bit, but that central theme will become apparent by the end. Starting with Elon Musk's announcement of his intention to start a service called Truth GPT. Fox News released a fascinating interview between Elon and Tucker Carlson, where Elon talks about his history of working with AI, and in particular, some of the reasons behind starting OpenAI. Now, of course, everything was presented from Elon's perspective, but nevertheless, there were some key details in this interview which are really important for those of us following the world of AI. In particular, Elon talks about his ex-friendship with Google co-founder Larry Page and according to Elon, he raised his concerns with Larry about the safety of Google's AI. According to Elon though, Larry was unconcerned about the alignment or safety aspects. In fact, Elon even claims that Larry branded him a specious for being so concerned about the potential impact on humanity. According to Elon, this was one of the reasons that he started OpenAI, to avoid Google having all of the AI power on its own. Although now OpenAI apparently has its own alignment and safety problems, which we will come back to later on. But what does Elon's push into AI mean for us? Well, firstly, this type of discussion will give fuel to those who are calling for greater regulation, oversight, or even a pause on AI development. Secondly, though, what we're starting to see is that we may end up with competing large language models that each tout their own benefits. Benefits. Now, anyone in business needs to be ready to optimize their business for each of these models. For example, if you go on ChatGPT through Bing and you ask it to recommend a TV, what it's going to do is it's going to find some trustworthy websites and recommend you a product from those websites. Well, let's contrast this with TruthGPT. Elon's stated aim for TruthGPT is to make it a maximum truth-seeking AI that tries to understand the nature of the universe. Now, how exactly it does this remains to be seen, but we've seen Twitter's approach to truth where it crowdsources fact-checking using community notes. So whether or not TruthGPT will use something similar remains to be seen. Regardless though, if we're gonna get AIs to recommend our products or services, we need to be optimizing our content Content to be recommended by each of these AIs. How exactly a truth-seeking AI works remains to be seen. And of course, the goal of this channel is to help you optimize for these different new technologies as they come out. And we will be performing our own tests and optimizations. Last weekend, this article came out in the FT magazine. This is a request from a very well-educated investor in AI companies, Ian Hogarth, who's invested in over 50 AI companies, for AI to slow down and in particular have some some sort of oversight and greater focus on alignment. Now, the article basically highlights the growing gulf between the AI tech that these companies are developing and their own ability and focus on alignment and safety, basically how we stop the AI that we're building from killing us. One of my favorite quotes from the article is this, what is more concerning is that the number of people working on AI alignment research is vanishingly small. For the 2021 State of AI report, our research found that fewer than 100 researchers were employed in this area across the core AGI labs. And it works out that just 2% of DeepMind's total headcount is allocated to AI alignment. OpenAI has about 7%. The majority of resources were going towards making AI more capable, not safer. Now, Ian proposes a solution to the AI safety and alignment issue. But to be honest, I don't even think that that's the main story here. The main story is that this sort of alignment and safety conversation is becoming more and more public as people have more and more experience with these models and understand their capabilities. There are even signs that the companies themselves are becoming scared, or at least some people in the companies. For example, OpenAI's head of alignment tweeted, before we scramble to deeply integrate LLMs everywhere in the economy, can we pause and think about whether it is wise to do so? This is quite immature technology and we don't understand how 
it works if we're not careful with setting ourselves up for a lot of correlated failures. This is OpenAI's own head of alignment saying this. Two days later, what happens? OpenAI releases plugins, basically integrating LLMs everywhere in the economy. Now, to me, this suggests an internal power struggle. Who is Yan talking to when he tweets this? Surely he is talking to OpenAI's leadership. He doesn't feel his concerns are being heard in the company, so he has taken to broadcasting this publicly. This also suggests some sort of power struggle between people in the company that want to release the tech and make it better, and the people who are thinking about alignment and want to be more cautious. In fact, a Bloomberg article also from this week, which was covering Google's internal struggles around alignment and safety, said basically exactly this. Doing ethical AI work means you were literally hired to say, I don't think this is population ready, she added. And so you are slowing down the process. And of course, all of this is precisely Elon's argument about why something like TruthGPT needs to exist. So what does all of this mean? Well, the discussion about alignment and safety is becoming louder and louder. More people are talking about this this. And I think we're starting to get a consensus from not only the companies, the commentators, and even the investors that actually we need to be spending more time thinking about how we're going to make sure that this technology is safe. This probably also means that we're going to see slower rollout of large language model technology. But I'm not actually sure that that's going to make a huge difference. As we saw in last week's This Week in AI, a lot of the new capabilities of AI are actually being discovered when you link up different AI models together. In other words, we don't need GPT-5 to get closer to an AGI future, given that we can see dramatic increases in the capabilities of these models by chaining them together, giving them access to plugins and different functionality and enabling them to do things that we would never have expected a simple large language model to be able to do on its own. Next up was Google's announcement of its next generation AI search engine, Maggie or Magi or Magi or Maggi. According to New York Times, this is going to be an all new search engine powered by AI. But Google will be taking some of the features from Maggie, Maggie, Meiji, and building them into its current search engine. Now, aside from saying that there's gonna be more personalization and an ability to anticipate the user's needs, there is very little detail in this announcement. It basically seems to be they've given this thing a name and they're gonna be sharing more details soon. Which of course raises the question, why is this even coming? coming out. Why is this even a news story? Well, a couple of days earlier, there were rumors that Samsung was considering replacing Google with Bing as its main default search engine on its smartphones. Now, whether these rumors were anything more than a bargaining tactic by Samsung to negotiate a preferential fee from Google as the contract comes up for renewal remains to be seen. But some people have speculated that the timing of Google's Meiji announcement and this whole Samsung thing seems to be kind of suspicious and potentially it looks like Google is just trying to sort of wrestle the narrative about Bing being the dominant AI player and bring out its own announcement which shows that Google is working on something that's going to be really next level. Of course the big questions are what is this thing actually going to be because there is no detail at the moment. They've mentioned personalization and Google has a vast amount of user data to be able to personalize search around. For example it knows your location, it knows your search and browse history on Google Chrome, it knows all of your emails if you're using Gmail, it knows the content from your doc if you're using Google Docs. So it could produce a much more personalized experience. However, Google has tried greater personalization in search before and it didn't really work. They rolled back a lot of those features. So the question remains to be seen how they can use all of this data to provide a significantly better search experience than what we already have with Google. The other phrase which raises some alarm bells for me is seeking to anticipate users' needs. Now, seeking to anticipate users' needs before they express those needs can often be considered creepy. We've all got that one friend who is convinced that their phone and their Facebook app is listening to them because as soon as they mentioned having breakouts, then they started getting adverts for skin peels on Facebook. And what it turns out is that actually Facebook isn't listening to you at all, but rather the algorithms are so good at predicting your needs, they're able to show you ads before you've even specified that you need that product. Now, far from being a magic trick, which we're all pleased with, actually we tend to view this sort 
sorts of behavior is incredibly creepy. So there's a big question there about how Meiji finds that balance between being really useful and just feeling creepy. But what does this mean? Because I think there's a bigger story here. For me, the big question is whether Google is really keeping up in this AI race. We also saw in a Bloomberg article this week that Google's own employees were begging them not to release BARD. And in one case, they said it was worse than useless. We also saw this week Google merging Google Brain and DeepMind, which by all accounts seem like two very culturally different divisions. And some insiders have said this seems like a bit of a desperate attempt to slam these divisions, which have very different cultures together in order to try and make them a bit more streamlined so that they can take on the progress that they've seen elsewhere, particularly in open AI. And it kind of gives you the sense that if Google does have a huge AI play up its sleeve, it's playing an incredibly good bluff so far. Next up was an NVIDIA text to video paper and some demos. Now these are pretty standard what you would expect text to video demos and of course they look more realistic than the previous versions. That's what these kind of demos tend to show is that things have improved and we've been expecting improvement in text to video for a long time so this isn't a surprise. All that this basically is is a checkpoint to show us where we're at on the text to video journey. But what these demos do show is that there is going to be huge implications for certain types of business. For example, e-commerce, the ability to make realistic looking products, photos and videos for a wide range and a huge number of products without having to go to a studio to shoot these. This is going to be transformational for e-commerce businesses. Likewise, for social media, a lot of businesses struggle to create video content for social media. The progress that's being made in text to video AI shows us that we're not too far away from business is being able to create video just purely with some text prompts, overlay their own branding guidelines and have some usable video content that they can be publishing. So none of this was really a surprise. We know that text to video is coming. We know that it's difficult and we know that the companies are making progress. So this is really just a checkpoint to say, here's where we're at with this at the moment. The final piece of news we're going to cover this week is Greg Brockman's TED Talk. Now, Greg Brockman is the president of OpenAI and he gave a fascinating chat GPT demo live on the TED stage. Now he showed ChatGPT working with plugins and gave a few examples that we haven't seen before. For example, we saw a bit more detail of its multimodal functionality working with the tool being able to produce images and then actually post a tweet with a link to an open cart recipe that he'd made all using ChatGPT. And that's kind of cool, although there's arguably little requirement for an AI to post tweets on your behalf and that type of stuff. But for me, the most impactful thing that Greg demoed was ChatGPT's ability to fact check itself. For some time, these tools' willingness to hallucinate has been one of the blockages which have stopped their widespread use or have required significant human intervention. For example, in our agency, Exposure Ninja, anytime we're publishing ChatGPT related content, we have to fact check every single claim made in that article because other Otherwise, this thing could be publishing mistruths. But in this TED talk, Greg shows that actually ChatGPT, given access to the internet, can do its own fact checking. If this turns out to be viable, this is a solution to one of the primary problems that people face with ChatGPT, namely the fact that it actually has no real concept of truth. It's not that large language models want to be untruthful, they just don't know truth from mistruth. Whereas what we're seeing here is that adding an extra feedback section at the end can help the AI correct its own mistakes. I think this is a really important solution to a significant problem that has to be overcome in order for this technology to reach its maximum disruption potential. So now that's been reached, who knows where we're off to. But one thing's for sure, AI is going to tear a lot of industries apart. And by the way, if you're in business and you consider it a priority to be kept up to date with what's going on in AI, then join the Powered by AI newsletter at pbai.co. This is a weekly newsletter which updates you on the key goings on in the world of AI and most importantly, what it means for you. This newsletter is designed specifically for people who are in business, who have to deal with the disruption potential of AI, but who are also looking for new opportunities that AI will unlock. So go and join the free newsletter today at pbai.co. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments what's the one thing that you've been most excited or terrified by in the world of AI this week. Until next time, see you soon.